Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1971-74 Carryover League offseason look. And tonight we're going to start looking at the team's 12 players that they already have in, their, in the league uh, for 32 teams. 12 players on 32 teams, 384 cards. We're just going to look at and consider if any of the cards uh, can be improved in the draft, meaning that during the draft that car that player gets shifted to a different year where he's better the team doesn't actually add a player obviously and then at the end of the draft they will be short a player or two depending on how many times they do this and that's what makes the token round of the draft the uh, undrafted free agent part of the draft so interesting so we're gonna take a look tonight uh, the first of four parts of this series um, and we're looking at, uh, there are 384 denoted with a green color. If you remember the trade carousel, there was a, there was a color plan um, that we used. Uh, we'll just bring this up really big for a moment. When we were making trades, uh, you know, we had that the blue uh, was the uh, keeper meaning you had the rights to a guy in the draft and you could take him unless you gave up those rights. Red players indicated he's retiring. A yellow player means he was put on waivers. So all 32 teams could claim him in the draft. He, we're just letting you know that he was moved off of a particular team, which could also reclaim him. And lastly, the green players were carry-ons. Uh, they're presently stored in Baltimore, you know, I mean, uh, or like this was a trade. But the green guys were stored and they've been moved into the new t uh, teams that were traded to. So when we go back to the um, carousel list of carry-ons, um, you know, we have 384, 300, a row of 384, that's 12 times 32 teams. The other fun thing about the math is Mathematically, I can comp I know which year and what number in within the year each player is recorded as, and I get an, a bulk sum of that, and it has to be this number, and I uniquely test it, and you know it's, it's unique, and so everybody has the proper number of guys they that are that this actually matches the actual hard stratomatic cards that are in the league. So when I go back here. Tonight we're going to just go do it in eights, um, and it's going to be alphabetical eights. So we're starting at one with Arizona, and if you look in this quadrant here, you'll see that the seventy, the first column is the year of seventy-one, year one, then seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four. Because there's no number here, it means that's because he's already in this year. So we have seventy-one Daryl Knowles. And the question would be, is he better in 72, 3, or 4? And the same thing goes with the 72 guys. Is he better in a future year, 73 or 74, or perhaps go back a year, which happens very rarely. Do you go back? Because it means you probably made a mistake by putting him in that year to begin with. And then the guys that were just brought in last year, the 73 guys, are they better in 74? And I've already done the analysis for the eight teams. And so what I did was I have baseball reference here to look up the stats and I also have a picture of the card in question and I've highlighted a year that would be considered. And actually it turns out it, that player one in this particular thing is Daryl Knowles, an Arizona Diamondback pitcher uh, acquired from the Rangers in the offseason. And what I'm saying here is that in 1972 he might be better than he was in 1971. Now this is one of the more interesting and intriguing cards or players when you look a little bit closely at their old stats. So I'm going to pop that in up here. What happens in 71 and 72 for Daryl? Alright, so 71, his total stats were used, 7 and 4, 357 ERA, a whip of 1.16. 72 Five and one, sparkling 137 ERA, a whip of 1.31. Isn't that curious? The lower the ERA, the more guys he puts on base. So, uh, and the innings pitched are virtually the same. 
So what's the big difference? How did that get so radically different? And the answer is home runs. In 71 and 68 innings, he would give up um, only 22 walks, but five home runs, which brought the ER up to 357. Also, um, the earned runs here uh, are almost identical to runs allowed. And then in 72, same amount of innings, but fewer home runs, just one home run allowed. But he walked a lot more batters. The walk strikeout ratio is 37 36. And so he put more guys on base via the walk, but only 10 runs scored. This is the card right here. And so the question is uh, do you stick with the 71 card or 72 card? This will be a draft day decision. For a car with a 137 ERA and as a lefty, you're going to reach base virtually everywhere here plus the five, which is nothing special about it. And against lefties, it's pretty much the same, plus a five and a nine. So of, of the stats, I would say this 137 is very optimistic. And this 357 card we're not, I don't have to look at at this present time. And there was a reason it was drafted is it just looks a lot better if you take away some of those home runs and bad luck. So the premise is he was unlucky in 71. He was really lucky in 72. And remember, next year in the 72-3-4-5 season, you could just get this card automatically. You don't have to upgrade to it. So that's the decision or the thing to consider in the draft. What do you do with Daryl Knowles? Leave him alone or make him give up fewer homers and walk more batters? Seems like a, a, a big price to pay for that kind of improvement. Next guy, also in Arizona, is the 73 Steve Braun card. And let's see if I can find him over here. There's 73 Braun there. And we'll bring up the stats. Comparing 71 to 73. So 71 card is in the league right now. Do, uh, does pretty well. Uh, 254, 350 on base, 694 OPS. 73 card, he's got an 845 OPS though. And the, the reason is because of the, uh, the home runs. Uh, he's got power against righties and walks. And, uh, but his defense is only at third base. Now he was playing a lot of second base with the Diamondbacks in the last season. So you'd have to find a new second baseman. So yeah, he, he is more powerful um, with the on base and, but it's only homer one to five double. Uh, it's not like it's a ton of home runs really. But uh, let me get this edge of the card to uh, be visible here. I guess I can't do that. Oh well. So that's what the brawn. Oh, there we are. That's what the brawn card looks like. And uh, you know, I could, you know, upgrade that card, but it might just be a, a you know a sideways kind of move. That's the only two guys to consider for Arizona. All the other guys, it doesn't matter too much. All right, Atlanta in 74, it's three guys. So I'm gonna start with uh, Marty Perez, who really is not very special as a hitter. But in 74, Perez does better than his early years. He goes from a 227 hitter to a 260 hitter. And ultimately for an infielder, it's gonna come down to defense assisting the bat for Marty Perez. And uh, here's his card. And he's a three at second base, but you have Davey Johnson coming in to play second. You really need him to play short, and his defense is worse at short. And you see it's a lot against the lefties without power, without stealing. It's not very special, really. And so you might just want to leave him alone and stick with his uh, 71 card and just, you know, go through the normal progression. Phil Negro. 
Negro 74. Uh, take a look at his stats, you'll see a slight bit of improvement. I mean, he's pretty cons one of the most consistent pitchers, obviously, the knuckleballer throughout his career, performance-wise. So 71, he's got a 298 ERA and a 118 whip. Uh, in 74, he's a 20-game winner, led the league in wins. He's got a 238 ERA, pitches 302 innings with a 111 whip, and is on the Cy Young list with this card. Starter 8. So this is an excellent card, really is. Um, he's got a good card again in 71, um, but your ERA would be a half a run lower, and your whip will be slightly lower too. So, could do it. It's a luxury. If you have extra draft tokens, um, and you have uh, don't have any other guys in 74 you like, that would be the move to make. But the big move is right here with Ralph Gar, which is, the funny thing is, is <laughs> how can it be a big move for a 325 hitter? Well, Mr. Gar, I mean, so we have a 72 card where he's hitting 325. But in 74, he is 353 with MVP votes, leads the league in triples and hits. Where is old Ralph at? And there he is. So, against righties, yeah. Uh, and he has power. And he's an A, of course, A stealer, AEB. 1 to 17, the triple automatic on 7, and, and the single, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a 353 card, and you just want to get these cards in the league. I will say, though, that the present card, the 325 card, he's a 3 in left field. So, it's a luxury for the Braves to do that. You can just wait for Gar, because he's also good in 73, I believe, 299. But if you want a 353 hitting Ralph Gar, um, and this Atlanta offense is insane, with Hank Aaron, and uh, <laughs> they're getting Davey Johnson... Um, and they have uh, Dusty Baker, and yeah, it's 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 insane. Darrell Evans. So that's a look at Atlanta. Next team is Baltimore, and they have one guy retro they're thinking about, which is Mike Cuellar. And why? When I say retro, uh, 71 Cuellar is a course in the World Series with the Orioles as a 20 game winner, the 308 ERA. And you're like, why did this, why was this year skipped? Well, because we felt that in 72, when the Orioles weren't as good, Cuellar actually pitched better in a losing cause. He only won 18 games, but the team wasn't as good, but he pitched better. Um, as it turned out, Cuellar got knocked around with this card. So after getting knocked around with that card, do the Orioles um, decide that they want to go back to the 71 card? And the reason to do that would be that he might be better against righties. And you see these homers against lefties, normally you, this would bug you, but again, left-handed batters against left-handed pitchers a lot of times don't have power. So. What you're looking at mostly is what's happening over here. And he's a starter nine versus a starter eight. So you could go retro and you could say, well, you know what? He was a 20 game winner and the Orioles won the World Series in 71. Maybe I should just go with this card. The other Oriole is Bobby Gritch. We took his 72 card when he was a rookie. And then Gritch uh, in 74 would start to hit for some power. You might want to get as much as you can out of Bobby Critch before you, uh, he, he gets uh, traded or goes into free agency. Let's look at uh, Gritch's numbers up here. So 72 Gritch uh, as a rookie and an all-star. Actually, he was a rookie and well, he might have gotten rookie status in 72. He was an all-star, got MVP votes with a 278 card. But in 74, he has 19 home runs. Oh, he's a one at second base. Oh, that's a big deal. And he was a three. But they, you know, it's interesting. They had him play shortstop last year because Davey Johnson was at second. So maybe you just move him to one where he's going to play most of his Baltimore tenure. And you don't have Mark Belanger, but you got to find a shortstop. And there are two shortstops out there to find, like a Bobby Wine comes up. 
a guy who's a two hits like 100, 200. That's what Belanger would do anyway. So the Baltimore could find a two at short if they wanted to. It wouldn't hit very well. But you'd have a one at Gritch at second base with all this power and walks. That's a pretty interesting move for them. Next up, well, Boston. We looked and we couldn't find anybody that for Boston that gets better, which is good for Boston. That means they have the best version of all these players. So Boston's in good shape, not having to make a move. Next, the Expos. Three guys. Um, Boots Day is a center, left-handed hitting center fielder who was leading off last year. Uh, can hit lefties, still can't hit them. But um, his previous, the current card, he's got walks in the entire two column. So you can deal with that against left-handed pitching. And against right-handed pitching, the average and the power is up. But he's he was a two, and now he's a three, and he's no longer a beast stealer. So that's a lot to give up. You're giving up range, the ability to get walks against lefties just to get the power with that Boots Day card. Bill Stoneman, the ace of the of the club, has back-to-back -back nice years. 71 year. We'll look at his stats up here. They're pretty close. He had a nice year. 71 and 2. But two's a little bit better. There you go. 315 and a 17 game winner. 298 ERA and 72. Whips a, a little bit better. And he's an all star. And this is the card. Uh, as a starter eight, dominates versus righties, puts some guys on versus lefties. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, sometimes if you are short in talent in any of these years, you do an improvement, and that makes up for the lack of talent in the free agent part or the draft part. So, yeah, either way, keep the stone man or wait to, wait next year. Next up, one of the most curious cases for the Expos, he's not been traded to the Dodgers yet, but it's Mike Marshall. And why this is so curious is that Marshall's 72 card is in the league with a sparkling 178 ERA in 65 innings with a 111 a whip, four Cy Young votes, and 10 in MVP voting. <laughs> and he might be better than in 74 when he is the Cy Young winner and pitches 208 innings in relief and 106, 106 games. So let's take a look at the card for Mike Marshall here. And here's the card. I mean, it's a nice card for a great pitcher. It's not Jim Brewer, I'll tell you that. Uh, just Jim Brewer's better than this, and he's currently the Dodger closer. You know, five, six, seven, and eight are all on base. And <laughs> this is one of the really most peculiar situations. I like the present Marshall, uh, the 71 card, uh, the 72 card. Um, as it's a sideways move. You're not getting a whole lot of improvement. And how much, how do you justify 208 innings in relief anyway? You gotta, you gotta change the rules of the game and let Marshall pitch anytime he feels like it, pretty much is what I would do. Just, you can pitch every day, really, uh, in a short league like I play. Just like Wilbur Wood has special rules. Uh, he can pitch in extra innings, and Wilbur Wood led the league in innings pitch. I, I have to change my rules to use this card and say, well, if you if you get the 74 Marshall, he can pitch every day. I can pitch two innings every other day, something like that. <laughs> you don't have to get any complete games on your staff. So, yeah, pretty weird. Pretty weird. All right, next up, the Angels. Uh, and this is all about outfield. Starting with Jay Johnstone. Um, now Johnstone, 71 card. It's a pretty cool card because he's got power against lefties and righties. He has 16 home runs, 425 slugging. But the 74 card, he's hitting 295 with an 846 OPS. So let's take a look at that Jay Johnstone. Now the problem is that he's an everyday player for the Angels in, uh, with that 71 card. And here he's not. Here he destroys righties. 
but you know he doesn't get a chance against the lefties. So you have to commit to a platoon in that case. Mickey Rivers is another one. Uh, Mickey Rivers is right here. Uh, first couple years, he didn't play a lot. They didn't make this 1973 card. It's 349. Oh, I wish I would have seen that. Stratomag didn't make it. Oh, well. But in 74, leads the league in triples. It's 285 with a 734 OPS. Let's take a look at him. It is a three. And it's pretty much a simultaneous move. He's, he's been an A stealer both times. Does draw walks which if you're familiar with Mickey Rivers in the late part of the decade, didn't do that that much with the Yankees. But these walks against lefties is very nice. I like that. And he still gets on against righties. So that's an option. Uh, you go from a 71 to 74, that means that for the next three years, you don't have to consider replacing Mickey Rivers. He's automatically on your team. So that's a that'd be a nice thing to do. I'm, I'd be happier with Rivers more than Johnstone. All right, 73, Don Baylor. Okay, this is the first, I think, full season with Baltimore where he uses his range and his legs and power. Gets it all to put together in 73. Let's look for uh, Don Baylor here in 73. Take a look at his card. There's the Baylor card. So, um... We, we have his 72 card presently, and we're thinking about going to 73. So, 72, it's 253 with 11 homers. 73 is this card. It's 286. He's a rangy two in left field. A stealer. So, the rangy two is nice. He was never, he could never throw. He always had a plus arm. Uh, but really, the power is not that much better. It's actually less because he had home run one five the year before. So basically, what you're doing is you're upgrading his defense to make him a two in left field. That's the biggest improvement between these two years. And that's it for the Angels. We got a couple more clubs to do. The Cubs. All right, the Cubs utility player Gary Jestad. Um, and here he is here. Uh, he, this guy did not have a very long career. Um, yeah, 69 to 72. Uh, the 71 card we're using, it's 286. Nice batting average. Uh, this card uh, has the, the batting average isn't there, but um, he hits lefties instead of righties. Actually, he hits both ways. Not not a big deal. Might not be worth the trouble. 73 Rick Russell. Uh, I wasn't crazy about this. So the improvement, or if you want to call it that, is that he can pitch on three days rest. So we're going to go from 72 to 73 Russell in this comparison. Um, he really, as a 23-year-old, he, he was excellent. 293 year eight, 129 innings. The next year, he's uh, pitching on three days rest. Let's take a look at his card for Russell. Now here's the card. Just not crazy about it because of all of the on base versus lefties, which is something that plagued him uh, in Wrigley Field his entire career, really. And once he got traded to the Pirates and the Giants, he really pitched excellently in his 30s uh, once he pitched in a bigger ballpark. A nice little late career, nice full career, like over 15 years, I think. I want to say he had a 15, 18 year career for Russell. Great against righties, no home runs either, which is good for Wrigley Field. The fact that he's pitching on three days rest, not a big deal for this team because they already have Fergie Jenkins. They already have Bert Hooten, so they don't really need that part of the part of the equation. And the last team tonight we'll look at is the other Chicago team, the White Sox, and they have three guys they can improve, and they might want to improve because they were real close last year, uh, losing the championship series to Oakland. The three guys are Bradley, Forster, and Buddy Bradford. Let's take a look at Tom Bradley. Uh, let's see here. 
Tom Bradley be the first guy to look at. So he's still uh, pitching on three days rest. Let's compare 71 to 72 for Tom Bradley. So uh, his ERA is, you know, it's really kind of a sideways move. He's really good both years. Uh, he just has fewer walks in 72 than in 71. He's really a 500 pitcher both years, but that might be because of the, of the team's performance. 39 starts and 40 starts. Excellent. And definitely, this is a really nice card. If you look at his, he's a starter six though. Gosh, starter six is not very impressive. But really, this is an excellent card. Uh, strikeouts on six, seven, and eight with this template here. One to four line out and double one to nine fly out. Now, if he if they never get on base and they miss all those, it'll just be gravy for this guy. Gives up little homers to lefties. Yeah, this is kind of a cool card, really. But he's also he's got a really good 71 card, so I could go either way with this. If I have a, if there's a shortage of 72 players for the Chai Sox, we'll bump it up. The next guy though is Terry Forster, and I think he might get preference. In that year as a nicely improving player so we have the 71 Forster with a 399 ERA and in 72 he's down to 225 with a 119 whip so that is much more of a performance improvement versus Bradley and look here's the Forster card here and here he's getting lefties out finally hate that triple <laughs> But we got an 11 double out, single one, and a five, six, seven, eight all Ks. No homers against righties. A walk on 11, no big deal there. He's, you know. This is a nice Forster card. So, yeah, I would say this is probably one of the first cards in this analysis that I'd say jump on this. Make Terry Forster better. Put him behind Jack Aker in the back of that bullpen and now go after the A's with pretty much. No real weaknesses. Great starting pitching, great relief pitching, and a great offense. And the White Sox and A's could challenge for the pennant again. Now that's a, this would be a really loaded White Sox squad. And we have one more player to look at, Buddy Bradford. And this, is, this guy's the poster child for check your stats and look very carefully at all the information before you judge when you're comparing players. So we have the 73 Bradford, <laughs> back to back years too, 73 and 74 Bradford. We're currently using the 73 Bradford. So the 73 Bradford we're using hits 238 with a 726 OPS. This Bradley hits 100 points better, 333 with a 925 OPS. But you got to look closely now at these cards. It's 75%. It's all of it is against lefties where he just crushes them. So it makes him just a platoon player as a righty against lefties. I have to go show you a little closer his splits in 73. We're going to look at his splits right here and you'll see why we like the 73 cards so much. So here's the 73 splits. Six homers in 99 at bats versus right handed pitching. 263 with an 801 OPS, all against righties. And his batting average is brought down because for some reason he had 60 points less against lefties. He just couldn't hit left handed pitching that particular year. So it's a reverse platoon. In his 73 card, he's got a homer on 1 5 and a 1 6 and a chance on 1 7. More hits and walks on his card. And against lefties, he doesn't have anything. So he's technically a platoon player both years, but in 73, he's a righty against righties, and you would let him play against lefties if he has good defense in the outfield. Whereas this Bradford is a luxury card. He's not going to get the same amount of playing time. There's just only 30... Three out of eight pitchers are lefties in the league. And a lot of those guys are relievers. 
So Bradford would be on the bench with this card a lot of the time. Do the White Sox have room that Bradford is a bench player, and they uh, and who would they who would they take out of the lineup in the outfield? You have Carlos May, you have Walt Williams, and you're going to have Ken Henderson. So Bradford. You're not going to take Carlos May out of the lineup. You also have Tony Muser playing first and Dick Allen at DH because they're both first basemen. So I might want to leave Bradford alone with his 73 card. And just, you know, when 74 rolls around, we'll just bump it up and then do the platoon then. But yeah, that's pretty interesting just so you can see. I should have taken a picture of that 73 card. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice card against righties. So that's it tonight for the first eight teams in the looking at carry-on players. We'll resume this over the next four weeks and see if we can find some more diamonds in the rough for these teams. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.